These are going to go on here, just like that. And then this will get welded like that. And then these tabs can get cut off because they're not going to be used. All right, the rads are on. And I cleaned up all the tabs off the side of them because they are from a dirt bike. So this guy is going to get welded onto there. And then it'll have to get snipped off. Here's that elbow uh, in place. I've cut this guy and that's about where it's gonna go. And then this will have to get cut off and an end like that will need to go on there. But we'll line that up later once this is kind of pointing in the right direction. All right, it's welded up, looking good. It's perfectly at the angle we want it. So, so now it's time to cut this guy and weld that guy up. All right, it's welded on. Let's get this rod in. Coolant system is really starting to take shape. I think I got to cut this a little bit longer, like maybe a half an inch, bring it to there, um, because this is sitting on the ridge. And then I roughed in place where this guy is going to go and get it to come to there. We'll turn this guy around and we can probably cut that and install that right now. And then we're going to have to work on uh, getting this guy notched out when that gets turned over, which is going to come off this way. And have to get tapped into here. This is gonna have to get plugged. So here is the water pump cover with the hole I put in it. And this is gonna be the pipe that's gonna get joined onto there. I was welding the last fitting on here, which is this. And when I was bringing the welder through here, I touched one of these fins and it just like obliterated it because I had the, I guess you could call it the heat set for this thicker metal. And then when it touched this really thin Fin material, it just blew a hole through all this, just melted it. Um, so I just threw some JB weld over it. So hopefully we can kind of ground test it and I'll swap that out when the new rad comes in. I ordered a, had to order a whole new set. Um, thankfully I went with the dirt bike rads because these things are significantly cheaper than the rads that are designed for this thing. Also the rads that are designed for this thing come out to like here and I wanna have a pretty streamlined cowling. And I think that I'm gonna get more than enough cooling with just these, these two rods. I think it'll be more than enough. Maybe it won't, but time will tell. I think uh, I'm gonna be more than happy with, with these two rods. This will be the last look at this gearbox internal before I put it all back together with this new seal. And I'm gonna put Loctite on all these bolts and that'll be sealed up for good. To fill up the oil, you take out this plug here and you fill it until it starts to come out of that drain. And there's another one at the top here that if you had this mounted the other way, um, that's where you would kind of fill it up to and that's sort of your dipstick. So you fill it up to there until it runs out, you plug it back up, put safety wire on it, and that's it. it. Doesn't get opened up or checked again, really. Just made a new plate for the uh, ignition module. So, uh, these are all Loctited and torqued in and they have the high vis torque seal on it. So now we can get this ignition module mounted back up. All right, the oil injection pump is ready to go back on along with the carburetor mounts. So this will go on and we'll put in all the bolts with some Loctite and we'll also put that torque check stuff on as well. All right, the oil injection pump is on. I just drilled and tapped these holes that were roughed into the block. Uh, and then we're gonna put a piece of aluminum across there to hold those wires in place. This guy uh, supplies the oil, which flows to here. This will have to be moved up quite a bit because the lowest point should be kind of level with that. Uh, so that gets pumped in through here, uh, depending on the throttle level. Um, it will get sprayed out of these little nozzles on either side. I'm just going around running lines, hoses, stuff like that, plumbing this engine in. Uh, I finished this guy, it looks pretty good. Um, yeah, and then next up is gonna be mounting that oil reservoir so we can hopefully get some oil through this thing and maybe turn it over. These rubber grommet things are not as good as they once were when they were new and we don't have a perfect fit there, which means puddle on the floor. So uh, I think I'm going to get new fittings. Well, I'm definitely gonna get new fittings, all aluminum and new grommets and Possibly a new oil tank. We'll have to see. It depends on the size that I can get. Hopefully we can get the same size. I mean, it leaks, but I can still kind of get this thing ready to do some testing. Uh, we get the carbs on, we get the fuel lines on. Uh, these fuel lines are kind of just temporary, I think. I think I might change these out. I also have to order a new 
uh, oil injection cable because the throttle cables are perfect, but this oil injection cable is not. You can see it is stretched quite a bit and it's bending over that uh, water line there. We did a lot of this stuff. I had some friends over that are pretty handy. So we all worked on that and we got it to run for the first time. So that was super exciting after rebuilding this thing and uh, not testing it at all. Uh, everyone came over and it ran right away. First revolution. Ready? Go. Oh, go, go. Mark. I've been pretty busy recently going to the States a lot, but I was still able to order these parts and uh, bring them back with me. I got pretty much everything I need here to finish the airplane, but uh, that came at quite the cost because all these parts that I got just here in this little order was actually more than the airplane cost itself to purchase. All right, guys, what we're looking at here is pretty much everything I need to finish the plane, minus a couple of bits and pieces. Yeah, these uh, these parts are not cheap, especially this covering material, because this stuff is good for certified aircraft, which if you guys are familiar with that, anything certified is most likely two to three times the price. And you probably know that this carbon fiber stuff is not cheap either. So that is going to be for the new cowling, which this thing's going to get. It's also going to get uh, these root ribs are going to be also made of carbon fiber. And I'm hoping to do the dash and maybe the baggage area. We'll see how much is left over. Um, like I said, this stuff is really expensive. So I'm going to try and be sort of conservative on it. But even still, that's a lot of carbon for this thing. Two of these tanks. Now, I ordered one before and I really liked it. Uh, I got this for the oil reserve, uh, one of these tanks. And then the other one is going to be my header tank. This is the original header tank that came in the blue airplane. And that is some pretty old and brittle looking plastic. I'm sure it's fine, but uh, this is kind of the most important fuel tank, if you want to call it a fuel tank, out of all four. So this thing also only has two inlets, um, which is fine, but it is nice to have the extra inlets already on the other header tank. This is what we're going to. Uh, it's quite a bit bigger, so that'll actually give us a bit of reserve too, which is kind of cool. So what we have to do is add these brass fittings to the two upper ones on either side. And then there's only, it's like it was perfectly designed for this application because there's two on the bottom and then one drain, which is perfectly what we needed it for. And this is not a header tank. This is for custom automotive applications uh, I believe it's for like a coolant overflow system or any other fluids you wanted to put in there, but this is going to work perfect as a header tank. Lined up these two lines and I've got these kind of set in place. And now we got to figure out where this next hole is going to go. So we'll slide this guy up. I'm going to mark that with the Sharpie and then we'll drill that hole. And then all this extra metal can get cut off. All right, there it is mounted up. I think that turned out really good. One fuel line that comes out at the bottom for the electric driven fuel pump, uh, which would be kind of a boost pump and a primer to get this thing started. The main draw on this side for the mechanical pumps. And then you've got your drain at the bottom. So this is the parts airplane and I'd love to be able to use both of these, but as you can see, this one is really wrecked and this one is also missing the top wood that actually mounts to the windshield, but this one's still intact for an outline. So. We can kind of use this one. I'll line it up with the other one that came on the blue plane and make sure that they're the exact same, which they should be. And this is the one from the blue airplane. And you can tell it's just been sitting outside for a very long time, starting to delaminate. And obviously that's not usable either. So uh, I've lined these two up and they are the exact same, which is awesome. So I'm gonna use this because it should be the smoothest template to trace. All right, I just trace it out, throw it on the bandsaw. All right, with a bunch of sanding, these two halves are pretty well perfect. Really happy with how they came out. And uh, now it's time to cover this stuff in tape and then we can get to wrapping it in carbon.
gonna make a carbon uh, layup over this. And the nice thing about this thin foam is it was able to bend and contour how I wanted it. So that will make a pretty nice mold. I still gotta sand these edges and then I'll cover it all in masking tape so that it peels off nice and easy and so that it kind of fills this gap. And then the carbon should lay nice and flat and fall over the edges. And all right, here's that part, fresh out of the mold. I gotta get it trimmed still, but this shiny part's the part you're gonna see when you pull the seat forward. And uh, just gotta trim off all this excess. But the nice thing about doing the carbon fibers, I was able to match that contour of the seat back. So it should be a little bit more comfortable. This will also get some foam over it and then covered in leather as well. Um, but it's gonna be a while before we get to that. So for now, that looks pretty good. All right, this part's pretty much ready to go. It's all trimmed up. I just need to sand this back part and clear coat it so that it comes out a little bit shinier and you can't see those tape lines. But aside from that, it's pretty much ready to go. All right, guys. Well, that's what I got for you guys today. I got lots of exciting stuff coming up. So hopefully you guys tune in for that. And I hope to see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.